BG10 quick overview with a little bit of troubleshooting technique depending on what the complaint is. This is our BG10, also known as a 10N2 walk-behind carpet extractor. First and foremost, this is your flow indicator. It is only going to spin if it is flowing solution through the unit. There is a small solution hose port right in front of it. It does not come with a cap. It has never come with a cap. There is an auto load gasket in there. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? Now, if you call us and you tell us the brush is not spinning, the first thing that we're gonna ask you is this. Is your handle leaned back past a 45 degree angle? That brush would wear out your carpet if it did not have this feature. If it's up like this, the brush is not going to spin. Lean back, it will kick on. You will hear it kick on. When you first turn this unit on, the only motor that you hear is your vacuum motor. So if it turns on, you know it works. If the unit is leaking, the first thing we need you to do is remove your tank, hold it up, and make certain that your cap and insert assembly is threaded correctly. If you have water in this and you hold it up and it's not threaded correctly, you will have it dripping out of there. Please stop and re-thread, okay? Otherwise, if you experience leaking on this unit, we're gonna ask you, where is it leaking from? or from where on the unit is it leaking. If it is your flow indicator, it may have water in that small solution hose port, and it may very well be depositing water right underneath the left rear wheel because that is directly underneath where that flow indicator is. So just lean it back like I have done. Take your tanks off first because you're gonna have liquid in them to identify if that's where it is, okay? When you pull this trigger and you have no spray, there are three components aside from this trigger that will be controlling that. The first one is your pump, the second one is your flow indicator, and the third one is your solenoid valve. If the pump is working well and we have you test it, with water in there, you're gonna take a large paper clip, stick it straight down in the small solution hose port. You will be depressing an auto load gasket. The pump, if it is good, will spray water six to eight inches in height. If it just bubbles out, your pump sucks. We need to replace it. If it shoots out, but it's still not spraying, what is your flow indicator doing? When you pull the trigger, does it take off like a whirling dervish? If it does not, your flow indicator is also failing. Now, pump, flow indicator, and solenoid valve could be failing together. Your solenoid valve is a brass valve that opens and closes to allow that solution to come out. If it has detergent locking it up, it can seal closed or it can seal open. We are trying to do our job. This is not trying to frustrate you. It can be one part only or a combination of any of those three. Hopefully this will get you where you need to be, but I do wanna point something out for those of y'all that get the hose with the tool. This is on the end of the tube on your hose. This is the part that is not supposed to come off of the tube. See what somebody did? This part right here goes into that small solution hose port and you twist it. Now, that means that to get it out, you don't just pull that disconnected the tube on that customer's hose and tool. You actually twist it out. This piece right here can be broken off on even the first insertion. 
If you do that, you are breaking your hose and tool and it will not depress that auto load gasket and engage. But if you break this off of your tube and leave it in there, every time you turn your unit on, you will be receiving a solution bath. Thank you.